Hey everyone, this lesson is on the antibiotics known as cephalosporins. In this lesson we're talking about what cephalosporins are, we're also going to talk about all the generations of cephalosporins including the differences between the generations, and we're going to talk about the bacteria and infections that the cephalosporins treat. So cephalosporins are a class of beta-lactam antibiotics, so beta-lactam because they have a beta-lactam ring. All of the cephalosporin antibiotic names start with the prefix ceph or ceph, so C-E-F or C-E-P-H, so that's how you you can determine or identify the cephalosporin antibiotics. So the mechanism of action of the cephalosporins is similar to other beta-lactam antibiotics. They are bactericidal through their ability to inhibit cell wall synthesis by binding to penicillin binding proteins on bacteria. So I'm going to quickly talk about adverse effects and contraindications to cephalosporins now because we're going to talk about all the different generations of cephalosporins in the next few slides. So adverse effects of cephalosporins in general include the following. Skin rashes, puritis, and steam Stevens-Johnson syndrome are some of the possible adverse effects. Some of the more common adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. We may also see a risk of seizures, especially with the cephalosporin cefepime. Nephrotoxicity is also a possible adverse effect of cephalosporins, and we may also see allergic reactions. The contraindications to using cephalosporins include the following. Includes hypersensitivity reactions to cephalosporins or other beta-lactam antibiotics. So if you're allergic to a penicillin, you may have cross-reactivity to cephalosporins. So it may be a contraindication to their use. So again, hypersensitivity to cephalosporins or other beta-lactam antibiotics is the contraindication to their use. So we'll begin by talking about first generation cephalosporins. First generation cephalosporins include cephalexin, which is also known as keflex. And cephalexin is a pill form. It is a PO form taken by mouth. The other first generation cephalosporin is cefazolin. Cefazolin is also known as ANCEF. And it is the essentially equivalent of cephalexin in an IV or IM form. So again, cephalexin is by mouth pill form. Cefazolin is IV or IM form. So the first generation cephalosporins have good bacterial coverage for gram positive bacteria, especially aerobic cocci. They also have coverage for group A and group B streptococci and viridin strep, as well as methicillin sensitive staph aureus or MSSA, but they do not have activity against MRSA or enterococcus. Now they do have some coverage for gram negative bacteria, including E. coli, Proteus, and Klebsiella, but they have inadequate activity against Haemophilus influenzae or Moraxella cateralis. They do have some anaerobic coverage, but no activity against Bacteroides fragilis. So infections treated with first generation cephalosporins include the following. They include uncomplicated community acquired skin and soft tissue infections. So infections that you're not worried about having a risk for MRSA, uncomplicated UTIs because they cover some of these gram negative rods, and surgical wound prophylaxis to prophylax against common skin infections with gram positive bacteria. Now the second generation cephalosporins include cefotetin, cefiroxime, cefprazil, and cefoxetin. They cover gram positive very similarly to the first generation cephalosporins. They cover a aerobic cocci, but they have slightly less activity against the staphylococci, and they cover generally the non-enterococcal streptococci. So they have no coverage for MRSA or enterococci, similar to the first generation cephalosporins. However, with regards to gram-negative coverage, they again cover aerobes, but they have increased activity against gram-negative bacteria compared to the first generation cephalosporins. They cover Moraxella cateralis, unlike the first generation cephalosporins, and they cover nice Syria meningitidis. With regards to Haemophilus influenzae, most of them don't cover this bacteria except for cefiroxime. So cefiroxime is special in that it covers H flu. And some of the second generation cephalosporins have increased coverage to include some oral anaerobes, particularly cefoxetin and cefotetin. So cefoxetin and cefotetin are also known as cefamycins. You can think of cefamycins as like a subcategory in second generation cephalosporins, and these are the cephalosporins that have increased coverage of oral anaerobes anaerobes like Bacteroides fragilis. So infections that second generation cephalosporins treat include the following. Respiratory tract infections that are community acquired, uncomplicated urinary tract infections or UTIs. They can also be used for surgical wound prophylaxis, pneumococcal pneumonia, and mixed aerobic and anaerobic 
infections, especially with the cefamycins like cefoxidin and cefotetin. Now the third generation cephalosporins include ceftriaxone, cefotaxime, cefixime, ceftanir, and ceftazidine. So a larger group in this category. Third generation cephalosporins have the ability to cross the blood brain barrier, unlike the other generations of cephalosporins we've talked about previously. They are generally used for in hospital patients. A lot of them are parenteral, so they're given by IV. Gram positive coverage is generally less than previous generation, so they have less activity against gram-positive organisms. They have no activity against the following organisms like Enterococci, Listeria, Isinetobacter, and MRSA, but they do have some activity against MSSA. So very similar activity against gram-positive organisms like the previous two generations, but slightly less. With regards to gram-negative coverage, they actually have increased activity against Enterobacteriaceae, increased activity against gram-negative bacteria in general, but they have no activity against pseudomonas. Monus. But there is a caveat with this. Ceftazidine, one of the third generation cephalosporins, actually does treat pseudomonal infections. So ce ceftazidine covers pseudomonas, but the other third generation cephalosporins do not. And they are active against oral anaerobes like Bacteroides fragilis. Now, a quick note here is that if a bacteria is resistant to third generation cephalosporins, they are ESBL bacteria or extended spectrum beta lactamase bacteria. So you may hear about ESBL bacteria. That means that they are resistant to third generation cephalosporins. Now with regards to infections treated by third generation cephalosporins, infections include gram-negative meningitis, pneumococcal infections, and a wide variety of hospital acquired and complicated community acquired infections like respiratory tract infections, blood infections, skin and soft tissue infections, and others as well. So you'll see third generation cephalosporins used a lot. They have good coverage for gram-negative bacteria. You may see ceftriaxone used frequently, especially in hospital patients. So these are very important antibiotics to remember and recognize. But again, they don't have activity against pseudomonas except for ceftazidine. And another quick note on ceftazidine, ceftazidine is a third generation cephalosporin, but think about it as a 3.5 generation cephalosporin. It has similar activity against bacteria like third generation cephalosporins, but also has activity against pseudomonas. So that's why it makes it special. Now with regards to the fourth generation cephalosporins, these include cefepime and cefpyrome. These also cross the blood-brain barrier. They are used in in-hospital patients. With regards to gram-positive bacteria, they have increased activity compared to the third generation of cephalosporins. They cover strep pneumoniae and group A and group B streptococci. With regards to gram-negative coverage, they have a broad spectrum of activity. They are similar to the third generation cephalosporins, but they also have activity against pseudomonas. And they also have improved activity against what we call space organisms. I didn't talk about these previously, but space organisms organisms are the following, Serratia, Proteus, Acinetobacter, Citrobacter, and Enterobacter. Generally speaking, when you see these organisms, you don't use cephalosporins. Third generation cephalosporins don't work well against these organisms, but fourth generation cephalosporins do have increased activity against some of these organisms like Serratia, Proteus, Citrobacter, and Enterobacter, but not Acinetobacter. So that's just a quick note on space organisms. And the fourth generation cephalosporins, interestingly, don't have activity against Bacteroides fragilis. So we've seen in the last couple couple generations that we've had increasing activity against anaerobic coverage like Bacteroides fragilis, but with fourth generation cephalosporins, we don't have activity against this bacteria. So with regards to infections treated with fourth generation cephalosporins, we want to think about pseudomonal infections. So this is very important. If you're thinking that a patient may have a pseudomonal infection, you can use this fourth generation cephalosporin, but generally speaking, these are not used. Gram-negative meningitis may also be a infection that a fourth generation cephalosporin is used for and antibiotic resistant infections in general. So these antibiotics have a broader spectrum, so we generally reserve their use for infections with antibiotic-resistant bacteria. I want to speak briefly on fifth-generation cephalosporins. Fifth-generation cephalosporins include ceftaroline. Ceftaroline is active against MRSA. Unlike the previous generations we talked about earlier that don't have any activity against MRSA, ceftaroline does. But interestingly, it has less activity against gram-negative organisms. It has no activity against pseudomonas and is less active against space organisms unlike the fourth generation cephalosporins. So here is a summary overview of the first to fourth generations of cephalosporins. So with regards to gram positive and gram negative coverage, first generation cephalosporins have increased gram positive coverage, but 
very little gram-negative coverage. As we move along up the generations, the second generation cephalosporins have slightly more gram-negative coverage and slightly less gram-positive coverage. With regards to the third generation cephalosporins like ceftriaxone, they rapidly gain gram-negative coverage but lose some of their gram-positive coverage. And with regards to the fourth generation cephalosporins, they have even better gram-negative coverage, so they can get some of those space organisms, and they have some slightly increased gram-positive coverage as well. And off the chart that is not included here, the fifth generation cephalosporin, ceph Teraline has increased gram positive coverage but decreased gram negative coverage. So that is a broad overview summary of the generations of cephalosporins. So if you want to learn more about other antibiotics, I would suggest checking out my pharmacology playlist. You can check out my fluoroquinolone lesson to look at all the different generations of fluoroquinolones as well. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.